Kevin, I've made my decision. Look at the big screen, everybody. Look at it. It says that magic three-letter word. And MS Stoney is it the last time he leaves the big stage. He's gone, run out. Paris running the second. And the irony of it all, it was Martin Guttel. Indian T20 Domestic World Cup is all set to begin in the next couple of weeks and the Indian players have flown there and then quarantined themselves according to the bio bubble and other protocols mandated by the International Cricket Council, the Indian Cricket Board as well as the mandatory quarantine rules that every sports professional have to subject themselves to in order to get back on the field again. And for now, for these Indian players who have been deprived of actual action of being on the ground and playing a sport which fuels their home, with which they are able to live such a lavish lifestyle. It was no surprise when the Indian players said that they were more than happy to even get some what they call net practice. Though in my viewpoint, net practice doesn't constitute actual match. But for these players locked in their home for over five months where they were deprived of actual training where they had to limit themselves to only weight training so even that was limited because not everybody is able to afford a gym there was no surprise that when they said that they were happy to go for these net practice they were happy if you look at the schedules and if you look at what has been happening over the past two and a half months the Indian cricket team is the only bunch of professional players who haven't played competitive sports, real sports, but instead are pretending to be happy by only indulging in net practice because for me, net practice holds no water. While professional teams from the West Indies, England, Pakistan and even Australia have played some kind of competitive cricket even though it is in a bubble without crowd and they have to go through mandatory quarantine protocols and isolating themselves in their hotel rooms respectively with no communication with the outside world. Here, what is the outside world? Here, the outside world is the fanatics who would throng the stadiums to take photos with their unsung heroes as well as take their autographs. Therefore, over the past few weeks, I have read a few articles which have said that will the Indian players be able to adjust to an empty stadium? Players whose bloated ego is further pumped up by the external crowd noise when we see certain players egg on the crowd to join in and all the pseudo nationalism that follows all the hyper nationalism that follows as i said the indian players are the only professional bunch who have not played any competitive sports they are only happy to indulge themselves in pseudo practice sessions and for those who are perplexed as to what is a net session or what is a practice session that these athletes engage themselves in these net sessions are very similar to the practice test we take before examinations trying as much as possible to create that examination environment but we know it's only a pseudo environment and there will be distraction in the actual examination room though now even that has changed there are no distractions in an actual examination room now let's get back to whether these athletes whose ego are fueled by fans fanatism for them whose ego is the size of a football will these 
Indian professional athletes be able to adjust to a stadium which is empty, which means no crowd noise, no hyper nationalism happening. It might be difficult for the Indian players, but that will be a very small bunch. If overseas players do participate in the Indian 20 over domestic tournament, they won't be affected because they have already acclimatized themselves to a crowdless empty stadium environment and environment where the only spectators the only audience are your teammates and where one has to fetch the ball if it goes out of the stadium so will the indian players be able to adjust well according to a pseudo experts their ego won't allow them according to me that is a question which no one knows an answer to. We will know when this tournament starts. And then there is a huge difference where athletes from other countries have already played some form of competitive sport. Which means and according to these very pseudo experts, the mental conditioning has already happened for these overseas players from England. South Africa, Australia, West Indies. While teams like England, West Indies started or restarted the sport way back in July, whether it was the test match, one day match or a 20 over match. And while Australia have also gone into that match zone, the other overseas players who are due to participate in the Indian 20 over domestic version are already playing other domestic tournaments. For example, the one in West Indies. So they are all acclimatized. They know what is going on for them. This lockdown is no longer an excuse for these overseas players when they do start the Indian 20 over domestic tournament for them. All the quarantine, the isolation, the testing and all such pseudo protocols or all such Mandatory protocols will no longer be something new, something they have to go through. But for the Indian players, it will be a big deal for them to be relegated to their hotel rooms, limited interaction with the media, limited interaction with the broadcasters. It will become a huge matter of discussion, though. Players from other countries have already gone through that phase. So in a way, I am curious to see how this all shapes up. How the media reacts when they say that, oh, look at these Indian players. Now they are getting into that zone of playing without the crowd, playing in an empty stadium. At the same time, disrespecting players from other countries who have already Practice enough and that is real time practice, real match, not the pseudo net practice that we pride ourselves in. It won't just be the professional athletes, it will also be the commentators, the broadcasters, especially the Indian commentators who are also not been in action since the stoppage of sports. We have only seen limited Commentators take part, which means that if you are in England, only commentators from England and a few guest commentators are allowed to be a part of that commentary pool. No Indian commentator is part of that pool. So even the Indian commentators and their super ego in which they are eager to interact with the players, even that part won't be happening that when finally this super ego sized tournament starts everything will be a novelty the discussions will be wow look at this now we are in a new normal new normal will be a word used multiple times by these people they will be discussing things which no longer are new which is nothing new but they will make it into a, such a discussion that everybody will say oh look it's all new Whatever has happened before is discarded. So it won't affect me when the super ego sized players, the super ego of the commentators talk about such subject because these things have 
already happened. What disappoints me is that while efforts were made to restart this tournament and even shift it to another country because of the limitations of playing this tournament in one's country and all the things associated with it while tournaments like NBA, US Open, the football leagues have started though in limited capacity with limited matches. It's a disappointment that the International Hockey Federation hasn't made one effort to restart hockey. Even the Indian Hockey Federation or Hockey India hasn't made any effort because a few players tested positive so they decided to shelve all training camps and this is what has disappointed me the most. But then when it comes to sport, you can't know what is going to happen. One cannot predict such things. But it will be very interesting as to how this tournament influences the way a sport is seen despite tournaments starting before the commencement of this particular super ego size tournament. Rankings are irrelevant. When I read about Messi's decision to leave a club, the reaction by the people was as if it was the end of that club, as if Messi defined that club. So what if Messi had been playing or had a contract with the club since he was a teenager or in his pre-teens? It is the ugliest side of sport when we can't digest the fact that a player leaves a certain team or a certain domestic team. So what if Messi had decided to leave the club even if it meant violating his contract? It is not the end of the world. He could leave a club. He could join another club with a fresh contract. Even someone like Messi needs a fresh environment and the reaction world over was as if it's the death knell for that club as if Messi wouldn't be able to survive in any other club and that particular club or domestic team wouldn't be able to survive without this marquee player. We give so much importance to one individual. We revolve everything around one individual. The halo that is created around one individual is something that sports needs to get rid of. Because for me, it's no big deal. It's no deal breaker if Messi decides to leave that team and join another. It's not the end of the world and certainly it's not something that needs to be discussed in detail because it's not something that affects people directly or indirectly. Basically a business deal between Messi and that particular team. Of course the premise has been created that if Messi doesn't play for that particular team. The fanatics won't watch the matches of that particular team, which means no gate money, no sponsorship and a lot of losses for that team. It doesn't work that way. Players come and go. They are expendable. But let's discuss about this more in another episode. For now, I would like to talk about something which is even more interesting. As we know, the sports restarted. West Indies and England were the first teams to enter the bubble, followed by Pakistan and Ireland, who also did their share of contribution as far as the restarting of a sport is concerned. Overhyped sport, if one can add the efforts of these three teams were not given that much of a limelight. They were just seen as two teams which were a practice for the real team that was to arrive. That is the Australian team. It was only when the Australian team arrived that one thought that England team has got a competitive team, a good opponent in front of them. And then what happens? Australia lose the series 2-0, though it doesn't influence it because there is no 20-over World Cup this year. So, all these tournaments, whether you win or whether you lose, are not in that kind of limelight. It's only about teams restarting their sporting calendars. 
Once again, the England team showed why they are a team of cerebrals, why they are a team of players who have the maturity as far as handling situations is concerned. In one match, they defend 160 despite the Australian team reaching 100 runs in 11 overs and despite all the effort, they were not able to finish it because the Australian team is a team of one or two players. It's either Steve Smith or Warner or Finch and then the rest of the players do not even contribute. One such overhyped player is of course Glenn Maxwell who is in a bubble within the bubble whose contributions are not really to be proud of. It's difficult to see why is this guy a part of the team. What has he done? He is blowing on and off on his performances. But then that's the way things are in a particular sport. We often say that this particular sport is a team sport. Well, it is not. It is 1% team sport and 99% the bloated ego individual sport. It is difficult to analyze the situation. Yes, Australian team lost the 20 over tournament to England, but then that tournament has no importance because there are no tournaments to look forward to. Right now, it's all about restarting. Though for me, this word restart is now old. Yes, the sport restarted among all the circus that was happening, among all the rules, the quarantine and everything that was surrounding it. I think it's time we stop using the word restart because it is no longer applicable. We have to move on from this word. That is a word which we should not even use in the first place. Yes, sports had to stop for a couple of months due to reasons which were going to be a little complicated. It wasn't exactly a restart. It was just a small break. Breaks happen. The only difference is that athletes take breaks in silos. Here, all the sports all over the world took break together and they took break because of reasons which were not in their hands. Athletes often take break because they are either injured or they are suspected of doping. The respective sports association feels that these athletes no longer contribute to the sports so they shunt them out or athletes feel that they are not respected by their teammates, their captains, their coaches and the management of the various sports associations. So they opt out here. These were not the reasons. Athletes were not injured. Athletes had no argument with their coaches or their fellow players or the team management. When this happens, only one or two athletes usually opt out, not the entire team, not 10 12 sports together. In a way, yes, it's a break. Yes, it's a break which shouldn't have come because there were so many important tournaments that were to happen this year which have been postponed or cancelled or delayed or rescheduled, but it is not a restart. In the same light, we should also stop using the word new normal because there is no new normal. Nothing that is happening now is novel. There is no need to make a mountain out of a mole hill. Of course, a few pseudo experts with their bloated ego feel that if we don't accept the word new normal or if we don't use the term new normal, we are not accepting what is happening right now. But we can accept what is happening right now without using this term new normal because it doesn't apply, irrespective of the profession one is in. This is part 6 of the rhyme of the ancient mariner. But tell me, tell me, speak again. Thy soft response renewing. What makes that ship drive on so fast? 
what is the ocean doing till as a slave before his lord the ocean hath no blast his great bright eye most silently up to the moon is cast if he may know which way to go for she guides him smooth or grim see brother see how graciously she looketh down on him but why drives on that ship so fast without or wave or wind the air is cut away before and closes from behind fly brother fly more high high or we shall be belated but slow and slow that ship will go when the mariner's trance is abated i woke and we were sailing on as in a gentle weather it was night calm night the moon was high the dead men stood together all stood together on the deck for a shanal dungeon fitter all fixed on me their stony eyes that in the moon did glitter the pang the curse with which they died had never passed away i could not draw my eyes from theirs not turn them up to pray and now this spell was snapped once more i viewed the ocean green and looked far not yet little saw what had else been seen let's continue to read from pg woodhouse's aunt's omni bus it looks as if the die were cast i said reluctantly it is she showed me you are really adamant couldn't be more so my heart beats for plank and i am going to see that justice is done for white ho then i'll have a crack at it that's my little man the whole thing's so frightfully easy and simple all you have to do is lift the thing off the dining room table and smuggle it over to plank think how his face will light up when you walk in on him with it my hero i expect he'll say and with a laugh which through silvery grated on my ear like a squeaking plate pencil she burst off proceeding to my room and turning in between the sheets i composed myself for sleep but i didn't get a lot of it and what i did get was much disturbed by dreams of being chased across difficult country by sharks some of them looking like stiffy some like sir watkin passe others like the dog bartholomew when jeeves came shimmering in next morning with a breakfast tray i lost no time in supplying him with full information of the harrow i found myself the toad under you see the poshish jeeves i concluded when the loss of the thing is discovered and the you and cry sets in who will be the immediate suspect booster bertram my name in this house is already mud and the men up top will never think of looking further for the guilty party on the other hand if i refuse to sit in stiffy will consider herself scorned and we all know what happens when you scorn a woman she'll tell madeline basse that gussie has been at the stake and kidney pie and ruin and desolation will ensue i see no way of beating the game to my surprise instead of 
raising an eyebrow the customary eight of an inch and saying most disturbing sir he came within an ace of smiling that is to say the left corner of his mouth quivered almost perceptibly before returning to position one This ends episode number 257 on the 7th of September 2020. For more awesome content, tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with Aditya.